As we light our chalice, may its flame kindle within us the warmth of compassion, the glow of love, the fire of commitment, and the light of truth. Everything is intertwined Everything that's yours and mine How completely we're combined Everything is intertwined Everything is intertwined Welcome to First Unitarian, where we come together to seek to understand the meaning of our lives, connect with others authentically, and serve life to build a better world. Since 1845, we have gathered in the hopes of bringing more love and justice into the world. We are a community of diverse backgrounds and beliefs who affirm that we need not think alike to love alike. We unite not around a common creed of shared beliefs, but around a covenant, a commitment to how we will be and how we will behave with each other and the wider world. Hi, welcome to First Unitarian. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. I know that you're coming into a warm and wonderful community. We are excited to share with you why our family is a member of the Unitarian Church. Thanks for joining us. We trace our roots over 500 years back to the Christian Reformation. We speak of ours as a living tradition that is always reforming, always evolving, always changing. Our history traces back to two earlier movements within progressive Christianity. Unitarianism affirmed that we have a common origin, that God is one. Universalism affirms that we have a common destiny, that no one is excluded or left out. Our congregation founded in 1845, 175 years ago, came together around a deep commitment to the freedom of belief and the freedom of conscience. There are no theological or doctrinal test to be part of our communities. Today, we are comprised of people who hold a variety of theological beliefs, ranging from people who believe in God to those who don't with everything in between. We come together today to grapple with life's big questions, to seek meaning and purpose, to learn how to live an ethical life, to live with integrity upon the earth. We draw on wisdom from the world's religions and the teachings of science, and we honor the authority of individual experience. We believe that each of us has wisdom, and in community, we refine our views through dialogue and discussion and debate. We are a little loving laboratory of the human spirit. Well, I've lived my whole life uh, in Toronto, except for two years uh, in Nigeria, uh, teaching chemistry. Um, I've been a member at first for just under 40 years, since the early 80s. You know, Unitarianism is a, an offshoot of Christianity. But I think that what we, we do is we've opened it up. We, we're essentially a group of dissenters who've gradually, gradually widened the circle and widened it so we can welcome just about anybody. I was raised Anglican, Karen's a heathen, and <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, we, we wanted to, to give him a, more of a, a, a broader uh, a, a path, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so absolutely, Toronto First really um, offers that. You know, Unitarian Universalism offers that. What drew me to First Unitarian is that a friend of mine told me about this, and she said, you're going to like the music there. It's really awesome. I felt so welcome when I arrived. And also I thought, where have these people been all my life? How come I haven't heard about them before now? So that was my reason for going. And Gabrielle? <laughs> well, I started to attend because uh, my mom wasn't Maybe. driving. <laughs> yeah, she needed a ride. <laughs> so I would drive her every morning. Um, but I started to find that like, it would kind of like the service would set the tone for my Sunday. I would just start like my days were just like, they felt so bright afterwards. <laughs> um, 
And so I started going because of her, because I was forced to, but I stayed for <laughs> that kind of like afterglow that you get after service. And I've always thought of myself as someone who's spiritual, but I've never been religious. I've never been, you know, so I never associated myself to a particular faith. And First Unitarian is like the perfect middle ground because there's mm -hmm. no <laughs> expectation. There's no, you know, you have to dress this way or look this way or be this way. It's kind yeah. of like, it was just like, show up, come as you are. Yeah. Stay, absolutely. don't stay, you know, like <laughs> dance it, do whatever you need do, to do. Do whatever but, like, you want. Yeah. yeah, but you're welcome. So it was, mm. it's not what I imagined a church to be, yet it's exactly what I imagined a congregation to be. People aren't afraid to be themselves or to express how they truly feel. And everyone's just happy with who they are and like what they believe in. And they're open to and learning new things and it's just such an open and free religion it's really wonderful so just to uh, give you some context i uh have used a manual wheelchair I can move back a little bit let's see i'm pushing uh, for about 25 years it was like of course yeah let's you know let's make sure this is happening let's make sure when you go up to the chancel there's room for you everybody make room just move over and it, it was just an ease of acceptance without even making it a deal making it a thing that you have to think about and that was kind of great <laughs> really great I'm Lynn Harrison, and I'm the Associate Minister here at First Unitarian Congregation of Toronto. The First Unitarian Society of Toronto was founded in 1845, when 15 families got together to purchase a small former Wesleyan chapel on George Street. Then a new church was erected at 216 Jarvis Street in 1853, and the congregation worshipped there for almost a century, until 1949, when a new property was purchased at St. Clair and Avenue Road. Our present building was built in 1952 in a modernist style and then significantly renovated in 1993. The relative simplicity of our space echoes the plain style of our Puritan ancestors, who stripped away most ornamentation from their churches, preferring clear paned windows over stained glass and featuring large pulpits to emphasize the importance of preaching. In the 1993 renovation, though, we did add a few key decorative elements, including our large copper chalice, which is the symbol of Unitarian Universalism. Each week, as a key element of our worship services, the congregation is invited to come forward to the chalice to light beeswax candles and a spirit of meditation and prayer to signify the joys or the sorrows or the concerns or celebrations of their lives. The design of the chalice is mirrored by the large copper disc that hangs on the wall, which the Canadian artist Donald Stewart called a docile. It is titled The Gathering of the Universe, and it is meant to convey our universalist theology with the idea of the many coming together to form a unity, a oneness, a wholeness. The most dramatic addition to our building in 1993 was the majestic stained glass tower created by the renowned glass artist Sarah Hall. The 75 panels of clear and colored and textured glass are based on the image of our chalice with flames reaching upwards. The tower windows comprise one of the largest installations of stained glass in Canada. While the congregation has grown and thrived in our present location, First Unitarian is now preparing to move in order to provide a more accessible and suitable building for our congregation for hopefully generations to come. In Unitarian Universalism, we're guided by seven principles, which provide a framework for ethical living and provide coherence throughout our communities of congregations. We covenant to affirm and promote 
First, the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Second, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Third, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. Four, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Five, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. Six, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. And seven, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. The seven principles have a big influence in my family's life. So they have a strong sense of social justice and they have a strong instinct for standing up when they see somebody being marginalized or being harassed for one thing or the other. But they also got a strong sense of the environment and they are not afraid to take a stand and speak their minds. In Unitarian Universalism, our principles evolve and can be updated. Work is now underway toward a new principle that reflects our ongoing work in anti-racism and anti-oppression. On Sundays, we come together for services called worship to celebrate life in all of its beauty and with all of its complications. Each week in our service, through the sharing of our joys and sorrows, we affirm that what touches the life of one of us affects us all. Through lifting up our joys and sorrows in a prayerful or meditative way, we affirm the interdependence of our lives and support one another. Well, as one of the ministers, I try to create a safe and nurturing space where people can bring their vulnerabilities, that is, their sorrows, as well as their joys. And in doing so, uh, it really encourages growth, spiritual growth, personal growth, the kind of transformation that can take place uh, when we're able to really look deeply into ourselves and, uh, and make changes in our lives. As Unitarian Universalist, we draw on many different resources for wisdom. We draw on scripture from many of the different world's religious traditions. We can turn to poetry, an essay, or even an op-ed from a newspaper. We believe that wisdom can be found in many, sometimes unexpected, places. Mark came to service every Sunday with his mom. He sat in the front row always. And he wasn't really verbal, but he could say a few things. And he would say them whenever he felt like it. So it could be in the middle of Reverend Sean's sermon, you'd hear Mark shout out something. And everyone was just, including the reverend, very, very just accepting of that. That was Mark. So sh the reverend Sean might just say, oh, yeah, Mark, is that what you think? Or something that made it very just, this is part of our community. This is who we are. Honestly, the community is really amazing. I, I just love how... I mean, I'm a curious person. I love how I can ask all these questions. And I know I'm not going to be judged for asking those questions, but I'm, there's also an abundance of answers. I can get so many answers from so many different people. And the answers will be different, but they all mean different things to me. It's just so interesting to see all those perspectives. We are co-ministers together. We minister to each other in, you know, in gentle and sometimes subtle ways that we're not even aware that we're doing. I was never treated as a young person. I was treated as a person, period. And same for my mom. She's never treated as a mother or an older person. She's treated as just a person in the community. Come as you are. You are a person in every way. And we'll accept you. You don't have to change for us. What's distinct about the community is the fact that you can believe different, have different beliefs and still cooperate together, that you can feel that you are always welcome and that there's a support group there for you if you need it. You know what I was going to tell you when I first got to first and everyone had the rainbow on their name tags and I thought, oh my God, <laughs> I've like landed in this like gay congregation. <laughs> but in fact, it just meant that they were welcoming. But um but, you know, if, they, if first wasn't welcoming, I would not be here. Um, 
I, it's it's been so important that um, we feel as a family and uh, myself as an as a lesbian that I felt welcome and that um, that matters. My name is Dallas Bergen. I'm the director of congregational music at First Unitarian Toronto. And I'm excited to be able to share a little bit about the musical life at first. Music is an integral part of our services and congregational life at First Unitarian. There are congregational hymns and refrains sung during the service, along with music pieces shared by our choir and team of staff musicians. The role of music is to support the themes and rituals of our services and the words of our ministers. Our music is varied, as we don't have a set liturgy for each week of the year, and our principles and sources make a wide breadth of music available to us. On the same day, you may hear us sing a contemporary secular pop song about the trials or the awe and wonder of life, and you could hear liturgical music from the Renaissance sung in a cappella and in Latin. Music is evidence that there is a God, even though I actually don't believe in God in that way, but I do believe in God in in things like that, in music and other things that that take you out of yourself. We also feature music by one of our ministers, Reverend Lynn Harrison, feature guest artists and members of our congregation. <laughs> In our tradition, the sermon is a central feature of our worship services on Sundays. Forgiveness, in my book, is about finding the courage of will within us to move toward healing and freeing ourselves from the hurts in which our lives and the lives of others have become entangled. This, to me, is the most basic work of this world. As Norman Cousins put it, life, life is an adventure in forgiveness. And so it is. Right from the very first service, Reverend Sean blew me away. I sat and thought, oh my gosh, he's so funny and literate. Literate was a big thing for me. I think in the first service I attended, he quoted from Thomas Merton, a Trappist monk, who I, whose work I absolutely love, has, have always loved his work. And, but he's somewhat obscure. So when I heard him quote from Thomas Merton, I was like, oh, whoa, interesting. Sermons are a conversation. And whether they are offered by an ordained minister or a lay person, the sermon is never the last word on any topic. At the heart of being human, we must accept that we are imperfect. But those imperfections, they are our teachers, our healers, and our guides, imparting to us wisdom. If only we can sit with the wounds long enough to let the light in. We believe there must be a freedom to explore ideas of meaning and purpose 
as we contemplate what it means to live a life of integrity. Could it be that God or life is calling us, wanting us to say wow every day to open us up into deeper relationship? You can search the world over, you can call up above, but the thing that will save you is everyday love. So I'm calling again, I don't mind if I do. Come with me, my friend, I am calling on you. Core values for us around preaching are that there must be freedom of the pulpit, meaning that any minister must have complete freedom in the pulpit to speak their conscience, to name what is on their heart or their mind. And with this comes freedom of the pew, which means that members of our congregation are welcome to take or leave anything they hear. But what the world wants is not what the world needs. What the world needs is you, you, you. Not the sit on your hands and the pews you, the other you. You know, the wildest, craziest, outrageous, engaged, amazed, excited, ignited, delighted, the fearless, fearless, hear this, the daring, caring, compassionate, child-hugging, life-loving, dream-chasing, fear-facing, open-minded, open-hearted, let's get this party started, you. Because the world needs people who on a Sunday morning have the audacity to turn off the TV and come together in religious community. First was so quick in putting up a, a digital profile. I, I was so impressed with that and it and it it really helped because well, we were able to respond to the, the needs of the community um, in a in a pandemic. There will though come a day when we are together again, when our pandemic bubbles are finally intentionally burst and we see family and friends and our long lost acquaintances. I imagine when that day comes, we will ask one another some variation on the question, how was your pandemic? And I hope we will then listen, truly listen for the answers. For no matter how each of our pandemics has been, we are going to need to hear one another out. Joining, you know, a Sunday service virtually, you don't have to turn your camera on, you don't have to speak, and yet you feel like you're part of something. I'm Angela Clausen, Director of Lifespan Religious Education here at First Unitarian. I'm so pleased that we're able to share with you today some of what makes First Unitarian so vibrant and so welcoming of children, youth, emerging adults, young adults, and everyone across the lifespan. All around the building, there are children engaged in fun and deepening programs. The life of children, youth, and emerging adults around FIRST is really joyful in spirit, using everything from games, stories, music, and film, to cooking and field trips to bring our topics to life. As a part of our lifespan education program, the group in the congregation that laughs the most are the wise elders, many of whom are not yet willing to admit that they are either of those things. I'm 94 years old and still taking part in the choir and in the pastoral care committee and the journey groups and enjoying every minute of it and still finding my spiritual home there. Well, there have been so many lessons that I've learned through uh, my ministry here at First Unitarian. The one I think that stands out is just the awe-inspiring um, diversity of, of human experience, you know, and the, the ways that people grow, you know, the fact that everyone is on our own unique path uh, and that they do intersect, they intertwine in important ways, and yet everyone grows in their own way and their own time. And what we need to do is create space for that, to be present, to listen, to witness, um, and to let that unfold in its own time and in its own way. 
If I have a spiritual journey, it's learning to say yes, learning to listen to other people that I necessarily don't agree with. It's, it's not how I was raised. I was raised in a very, very um, contentious sort of Italian-American crazy family and we argued all the time. Everybody was always arguing. Nobody listened to anybody else. And nobody certainly listened to anybody outside of the family that might disagree with them. That was where I came from. And I think in my life as an adult, I very slowly moved from that, but it was very slow. It took me a long time to open myself to people who didn't think exactly the way I thought, to open myself to, to say yes to say yes to life. Very quickly, um, my work at first became much more than a job, became the spiritual home for, for me, and then by extension, my family. I'm just really proud to be a part of the, a place that has and carries the principles uh, that it does. One of the, the greatest gifts I've gotten from uh, First Unitarian and Univer Unitarian Universalism is a sense of hope and joy. Because people are um, working in community and in, in, in intentional compassion and trying to, um, to, to make the world a better place, it really gives me great hope and, um, and, and great joy. And that's, that's been a, a life-changing thing for me. My Unitarian Universalist journey began when I brought my own children to a Unitarian community that was a small fellowship where we first set our foot on the path of this tradition and found its amazing embrace of who we were and who it was possible for us to become. This tradition has made a transforming difference in who each of us are as a family individually and how we interact with each other and how we express our values in the world. It takes a village to raise a child. And I believe that a passing moment that I have with someone on the streetcar or a passing moment that I have with someone um, in a classroom or, or, or it, it might be like a mentor, whether it's a teacher or, or a coach, like we're very much made up of every interaction and every moment that we have in our life. And I feel like Unitarian Universalism has uh, brought that realization to me and has helped me to um, allow that to flourish and grow. I feel it's helped me grow as a person tremendously. And it's been there for me when I need it. And I feel no fear in reaching out and asking for help because the community is behind me. First Unitarians helped me come up out of my comfort zone and like I think that I've been a more confident person because like they've taught me like how to respect myself. I know a lot more about myself but I've also come to terms with the fact that I'm still learning and I'm still growing. They really want you to be the best version of yourself. That's what they promote. Not a single religion, not a single belief, just be who you want and we'll support you no matter what because we're a community and we love you. <laughs> My kids have benefited greatly from the values of the Unitarian Church in the sense that it's uh, introduced them and it has led them through getting acquainted with um, the variety of people that there are. Um, traditional families, non-traditional families, people in all the different ways that they exist. I'm so intensely proud of the way my kids are growing up. And I notice so many changes that are so different from the way I grew up. So I would definitely credit the Unitarian Church for that. And I look at it as they're pollinators, really. <laughs> they take what they learn from the church. And if I'm in the bus with them or in the streetcar, I can see the little stuff that they do, the, the the different, you know, people that walk into and how they're so inclusive of everybody. And 
terribly proud of it, actually. It's something that I take for granted. And I know I'm going to cry. <laughs> but that is what I'm proud of, that they've grown up to be such special beings. And I attribute that to the church. You know, once you you know people from various different faiths, you realize what what we have in common is much more important than what we don't, what those differences that are really not very significant when it comes to how you operate in the world. I, I love the, the comment of the Dalai Lama. It's not what you believe, it's what you do and how you act and respect each other, right? To me, that's really important when we've had guest ministers from different faiths, they're always full of new information for us and also show us how much we have in common. There is no one perfect path. There is no one perfect answer. The fact that, you know, people from different faith traditions bring such creative answers or insights is really quite astounding. It's so astounding that we can have humans can come up with all these different beliefs and all these different uh, mechanisms of, of spiritual engagement. Uh, it's just reflective of how rich human life is. If you really want to know something about someone else, walk a mile in their shoes. And one way to do that is to reach out to other communities of faith and see, and actually you'd be surprised how much we have in common, but we've never had reasons before to reach out. So by reaching out, you're seeing a lot, you're seeing how, really how similar you are. And I think the more we open ourselves to other religions and other cultures, the better we all are. I want to thank you all very much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for your time. You're welcome here at any time. Hope to see you soon. Friend that I haven't met yet. Thanks for being with us. Blessings to you all. We are grateful for your interest in learning more about us. Each Sunday, as we state our covenant together, we say that we seek to dwell together in peace. That is our hope not only for our own religious community, but for our relationship with all religious communities, both here in Toronto and around the world. Thank you for being with us. Love is our doctrine. The quest for truth is your sacrament. And service is our prayer. To dwell together in peace. To seek knowledge. In freedom. To serve life. To the end that all souls shall grow. Into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other. And with all. Everything is intertwined Everything that's yours and mine How completely we're combined Everything is intertwined Everything is intertwined